So because my video on adamantium and vibranium was so well received, what I want to do here is expand this discussion to the realm of our series of comic book concepts and take a second to focus on Uru metal, the material used to forge Thor's hammer. So if you recall my previous videos on Asgard, we had talked about how that realm was best compared to a house. If the home you lived in were the entirety of the Marvel Universe, the closet in your bedroom would be an analogy for Asgard. Now within this closet exists a completely self-contained universe with its own dimensions, taking the form of the Nine Realms, each of which houses its own distinct appearances, races, and creatures, with one of these realms being called Nadavalir. Originally appearing in issue number 103 of Journey into Mystery, the publication serving as the source of Thor's stories leading into the launch of his own title, Nadavalir was originally depicted with a forest and mountainous appearance, not unlike Earth, but home to dwarves who lived underground. Having said that, because the information during this time was a little scant and that Marvel wanted to keep facets of Thor's origin mysterious for the purpose of maintaining intrigue while also allowing for usable content in the future, almost nothing was known about the origin of Thor's hammer or Uru metal with the exception of the fact that Mjolnir had been forged by the dwarves and contained the enchantment of Odin, only allowing it to be wielded by those who were deemed worthy. In addition to this, since Thor's hammer was the only source of Uru metal known within Marvel Comics, our only understanding of his properties came in Thor's use throughout his various publications. That said, in 2004 as part of the lead up to Civil War, because Thor was such a powerful figure in Marvel Comics and could have easily swayed victory for the side of Iron Man or Captain America, in addition to the Avengers Disassembled event laying the foundation for Civil War, Thor experienced his own Disassembled event in the form of Thor Ragnarok. Now if you're interested in learning more about that storyline, I have a link in the description to a video on it. But in the opening segment of the story with issue number 80, writers Michael Oming and Daniel Berman provided a definitive origin of the hammer and its forgery in Uru metal. What we're told is that in the early days of Asgard, prior to the birth of Thor and following Odin's initial rise to power, Odin had instructed the dwarves to forge a weapon capable of striking down the strongest of Asgard's enemies regardless of the location or power. Because Asgard had not yet become as intertwined in the goings on of Earth as it had following the introduction of Thor, Asgard itself remained self-contained, using its various resources to form the weapons and armor necessary to maintain its position in the pantheon of the Nine Realms. In addition to this, since the Davalir was home to the dwarves and housed a multitude of jewels and metal, Uru existed as one of a multitude of materials available for crafting. Now where Uru by itself is one of the strongest metals in the universe, its properties actually become more enhanced whenever they're enchanted using magic. Now how exactly it is that magical enchantment improves the hammer is not explicitly known, but the generally accepted idea is that it somehow draws the molecules of Uru metal closer together, making them more durable and heavier, allowing the weapon to inflict more damage. Something to note here is that because Uru has only been used a handful of times, including Mjolnir, Beta Ray Bill's hammer, Stormbreaker, and Odin's staff, as well as Tony Stark's Thorbuster armor, these uses indicate that Uru is strictly used as a material for weaponry with no known applications going towards construction designs, meaning there are no metal Uru buildings or wires. Having said that, while we do not have a way to measure Uru metal's tensile strength and ability to hold objects, Marvel has provided various instances of the metal's weaknesses and ineffectiveness against other metals, giving us as the reader an idea of where Uru resides in the larger Marvel landscape in terms of its materials. Referencing my video on vibranium and adamantium, while Uru metal is extremely durable and capable of dismantling almost all other metals in existence, regarding vibranium, like any metal, Uru resides on the force of impact to inflict damage on objects. To sidetrack for a second, within the realm of physics, impact force is used to describe the result of what happens when two objects collide with one another at high velocities and the resulting interaction. When an impact occurs, the friction between the colliding objects creates extreme heat, while the sheer force of impact creates sound. Because the nature of Wakandan vibranium allows it to absorb all forms of energy including heat and sound, Uru metal has no effect at the point of impact and aside from the effects of vibranium absorbing those energies, nothing would actually happen. Now for those of you who might be looking to the scene from Avengers when Thor's hammer hit Captain America's shield, this was actually an incorrect depiction. If the movie had followed the premise of the comics, you would have heard nothing from the impact and there would have been no shockwave of any kind. However, with adamantium, things are a little bit different. Where Uru metal itself is below adamantium in terms of durability, the hammer of Thor is actually stronger than adamantium. 
Covered in 2009's Wolverine vs. Thor, a three-part story by Frank Thierry and released as a digital comic, where the main story saw the two being tricked into fighting one another by Loki during the battle, Wolverine had attempted to slice the hammer of Thor using his adamantium claws, but inflicted no damage whatsoever. Now where this story does take place outside of the main Marvel continuity, as far as I am aware, this is the only instance in Marvel Comics when Wolverine was shown incapable of damaging Thor's hammer. At the same time, this is also due to a bit of cheating in that because Thor's hammer is magically infused, its normal properties of Uru Metal were bolstered, allowing it to withstand the potential damage of Wolverine without actually taking any damage itself. Now with the idea of enchantments in mind, this is really where Uru Metal stands out. Unlike Vibranium, Adamantium, Carbonadium, or almost any other metal, Uru has a natural affinity for magic, meaning that assuming they could wield it, beings like Doctor Strange or Scarlet Witch could actually channel their abilities into the Hammer of Thor, enhance its durability, or bestow it with a multitude of different effects, and then use them to their advantage. Conversely, Uru Metal allows existing enchantments to be passed to its user, creating a kind of increased durability and strength. Now where there is no instance that I am aware of where anyone but a handful of people have been successfully able to lift Thor's hammer, let alone enhance its magical properties, this feat goes towards the nature of Uru in that like all other metals in Marvel Comics, it has its own properties, making it unique in and of itself. However, its affinity with magic does not mean the metal is capable of overcoming the magic of others. Where there have been multiple instances of this, the most popular example came in the form of the Mighty Thor issue number 429 from 1991. Written by Tom DeFalco, where the story saw Thor doing battle against Juggernaut, during the conflict, Thor had thrown his hammer at Kane Marco, which resulted in nothing happening. Now the significance behind this is that with Juggernaut being empowered by the demon magic of Sidorak, an entity residing within his own dimension called the Crimson Cosmos, as long as he possesses the Crimson Gem and can utilize his power, in his Juggernaut form, Kane Marco is essentially unstoppable and immortal. Now where this isn't designed to be a comparison between Asgardians and Sidorak, it is designed to tell us that the magical abilities of Uru Metal in the form of Thor's hammer has its limits and it's not infinitely powerful. Instead, like any magical object within the world of comics, Uru Metal in all of its forms ranging from Thor's hammer to Heimdall's sword and everything in between is merely a tool and is contingent on how it's used by its wielder and the various abilities they're able to command. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.